Well, good morning and welcome back to Luke chapter 6. If you remember, we're looking at the Sermon on the Plain, or Sermon as Luke has it, his equivalent to the Sermon on the Mount. So last week we finished up looking at what it actually means in practice to love our enemies. Does that make us pacifists, doormats, etc.? So this week is a logical extension really of those ideas and today we're reading verses 37 to 42 on judging. So please take a few minutes to pause the video, find your way to Luke 6, read verses 32 to 37 to 42 and chew those over a couple of times and when you're done I'll be here waiting. Well of course this starts with the secularists favorite bible verse do not judge and you will not be judged in other words don't you dare criticize me or anything i do and there i've hoisted you on your own petard so there but is that what jesus actually means by don't judge is jesus really giving us a mandate to leave our brains at the door and become the lovely friendly labradors of the human world should we even become amoral creatures if not what is jesus getting at well the answer is contained in the word judge so this english word has a huge spectrum of meaning and it's exactly the same in New Testament Greek, so the original language doesn't throw any extra light uh, for us here. I guess that makes things a bit more straightforward. So to judge can mean to pass sentence. That's in a sort of judicial sense. Well, we're rarely in that position. I suppose there's church discipline possibly, but we can really put that to one side. To judge can also mean to criticise, to stand in judgment over someone else, to look down our superior disdainful noses at them from our personal pedestal, much as the Pharisees will want to do. This is admittedly an unlovely attitude and I submit exactly what Jesus intended to forbid. Now one thing I've noticed over the years and found myself guilty of on occasion is that it takes a certain conceit to be heavily condemnatory. Uh, you have to think quite well of yourself, really, in order to be ferociously critical. There is no wisdom in this, as we will see tomorrow. God may have to rub our noses in it to make us see reality. My advice, don't make that necessary. And there is, of course, a third shade of meaning to judge, the one Jesus clearly didn't mean to ban, in fact, the opposite. And that is to critique a situation or an action, possibly as an onlooker, but maybe as someone directly involved. And by definition, this means using our judgment. We have opinions. Our yardstick, of course, is the thing that matters. It could be societal rules. But for Christians, our gold standard, our plumb line, is the Bible. And we aim to agree with God. It's not to be nasty or haughty or snooty. It's to avoid the same mistakes that we are judging in others. But it's also to emulate good examples because this too is judging, and this sort is both healthy and expected of us. Now, sometimes the distinctions are not that clear cut, but one thing we are never allowed to do is to judge another person's motives. It's possible to jump to all sorts of conclusions and get it terribly wrong. And only God can evaluate a man or woman's heart. If we try, we will get into trouble. Here's the musing. Are you prone to condemnatory judging? Think carefully about that. Maybe ask the Holy Spirit to show you because 
we can be pretty bad at recognising things like that in ourselves. Anyway, grace and peace to you as you enter a fresh week.